Guys, this is Carlos EDC, and tonight I am going live, uh, having a quick discussion of everyday carry items, and just talk a little bit about my day. So, we're kind of going to wait for some people to jump in, and then I'm going to start showing my gear. But I guess I can stay, start right now. This is a Randy Lee fixed blade. This is custom handmade. I'm pretty sure this is 154 cm. Um, leather handle I'm pretty sure it's full tang I don't know how he makes this but extremely ergonomic this is like $800 for a custom from one of his um, knives they're pretty expensive but a uh, buddy of mine um, let me borrow a couple of the, his knives so that I could just check them out and play with them I haven't really cut anything or baton them or anything because they're expensive and you know just I'm just looking at them uh, you know fit and finish wise and stuff like that I've been I've been really enjoying having this on my nightstand uh, also recently I got a hold of the uh, Kaiser Dukes I know you guys have seen it if you're familiar with my channel but pretty cool offering from Kaiser Knives and tonight I also brought out the Kaiser Guru, which was my first uh, Kaiser ever. Uh, as you can see, it's been well loved, and I actually um, customized the point of it. I'm thinking I'm going to have somebody regrind it. My friend Gunner, Brian EDC, recommended a guy recently, so um, I might use him, but check out that drop shot pretty insane just because the blade is so heavy but I think once the regrind uh, comes in it'll, it'll be a better use or knife a uh, bit smaller gentlemanly type knife um, but yeah I'm gonna send it out to get regrind eventually I enjoyed this knife and it was the only knife I carried for a year or so and, and then I got more into EDC we also have the Outlast. Somebody recently was, was my asked me what was my favorite everyday carry knife, and I said the Outlast. Um, it was not really my favorite, but just I just couldn't see myself not owning it. I can see myself, you know, not owning one of these knives, but the Outlast is just, you know, it's expensive, um, and I think it's worth the asking price hmm. so yeah I mean what else do I have on the table I have the PM2 and tool carbon fiber sorry I, you, this was my carry today so it's pretty dirty uh, titanium pocket clip tool carbon fiber scale it says 35 VN it's not your vanilla spider go um, nothing wrong with the vanilla I just I enjoy uh, S35EN a lot, and in fact, I have three S35EN knives on my table right now. We have the you know, these three. This is 30V, and the pry bar tip is 3V. So yeah, as you can see, I brought out some wallets today. Hey Alex, how you doing, man? I brought more stuff out to play with today. Um, got some wallets out today. This is like full shell Cordovan wallet, um, which comes from a horse's butt. Very luxurious, very nice um, material for for wallets, and they smell amazing. Alex, I know you're into like higher end knives. If you're ever looking for a higher end wallet, look into full shell Cordovan pieces or just. I don't know where everyone is. They haven't popped in yet. They, it's never taken this long to get uh, someone in. So, I don't know. I guess it's Monday. And I didn't say what time I was going live either. So, But, yeah. If you're going to... I know you're into fancy knives. So, like, if you're looking to wallet, get something full shell Cordovan. I have this PC in here, too. This is uh, black shell. And the back of it... I have cash in here? That's cool. The back of it is the stand portion. And it's just 
very nice. And this is the number eight. I, I recommend it because I know you like good stuff. Hey, how you doing, man? Uh, so Central EDC. Um, yeah, I was just showing off some of my uh, full shell cordovan pieces. Uh, this one's from Wooden Steel, uh, about a hundred bucks. This one's from Stephanie, a lot more expensive, but there's a lot more material in here, and she actually uses like the full uh, shell, be uh, because there's so much leather in this piece, and she actually put the stamp in there, the whole stamp. It's kind of offset on this piece, but this was her first uh, full shell piece. You can see like the variants in green and, and some of the other dye colors in there. It's just one of my favorite pieces. Also got a bunch of knives out. My EDC was this, the Minimalist. Uh, yeah, it's my probably my favorite carry because I can do cash and just the right amount of cards in here. Uh, yeah, thank you, Alex. Uh, but knife-wise, we have the Guru here and we have the Dukes. Dukes is quite a bit bigger. But I'm thinking of having the Guru reground. Uh, I think it's BGM Knives, the guy that sent her well. Um, I'm okay with that, but I'm not okay with it not slicing. I do minimal stuff mostly. Razor Edge for regrind. Razor Edge for regrind, okay. My buddy Brian recommended BGM ni uh, Knives. I'm going to give them a chance. Um... I don't know why, but I don't know if I should just send two knives and have the PM2 reground too, because I've seen those and I think they're pretty cool. But I don't know if it's worth it to do it to my PM2 because it's already like a good user. But other than that, I don't think I'd do that to my other knives. This one's a recurve, and it works phenomenally, so I wouldn't get that one reground. Also have the outlast out here and it for what type of knife it is it cuts really well it's actually pretty thin behind the edge and I have a mirrored edge on the edge this was done by my buddy Brian uh, at Gunner EDC but yeah I only bought out four folding knives and one custom fixed blade this is a Randy Lee fixed blade it's about it's a uh, 154 cm. Uh, it's got a leather handle. Um, they're like 800 bucks, which I don't understand why. <laughs> but a buddy of mine let me borrow it just to play with it for a while. It's been on my nightstand for a bit. I mean, I think they're beautiful, but I just don't have this kind of money. And if I did, I wouldn't spend it on 154 cm. I. If I had $800, I'd have a Norseman. Oh, and I also have the Humble Opinel. Uh, brought this out for some reason. I was on my leather drawer, so I brought it out with the leather. I have a number 8 Opinel. I think I'm going to do some stuff to it. You know, I'm a construction worker. I got tools, and I know how to use them. So I'm thinking I'm going to do something. I mean, that's a good knife. If this was your only knife, I mean, you can get stuff done. I've cut everything from sheetrock to uh, insulation with this knife. You already, you ready for me to send you the Norseman for your channel? Uh, I'd love that, man, but that's like a huge uh, responsibility. But this is what I got on the table. Um, obviously, I have more knives, but I didn't bring them all out. Um, honestly, I would, I would love that, um, I'll, I'll holler at you, uh, soon, Alex, I mean, you're making me blush here, it's getting hot, um, but yeah, so, I know, I've, I know I've talked about this on my Instagram before, but, uh, the company I work for recently remodeled a laundry trailer, and this laundry trailer was going to be for, like, the homeless people. Um, you know, due to the situation right now, a hospital setting up outside uh, to help the homeless. But, like, this is what it looked like uh, inside. It just had 
a bunch of um, washer and dryers inside and it was for the homeless to be able to wash their clothes after they showered or whatever. Hey guys, almost missed this one. Well, we just started. Yeah, it's four of us thus far. And so we had to go and service it today and put some um, some steps on it so people could get in the actual trailer. So this is outside the hospital. This is where I took the picture just outside the hospital. And my, my you know, my coworkers were there helping me out. Well, I was helping them out actually, uh, putting the steps on here, and it was pretty cool. And we didn't see any homeless people there, you know. But then we had to service the hand washing stations, and that's when it got weird. Uh, like I love helping people, especially homeless, you know, because they're less fortunate than us, and they've had it rough, and they got nothing, you know. Um, but when we went there, there was about. We drove a little bit around the hospital building and there was about a hundred tents and they're letting them stay there because of the current situation. They, they they want them to be safe. And so they have them stay, which just makes sense to me. They're safer. Pro, they're probably safer spread out, but whatever. And they have them stay there and they have a whole bunch of hand washing stations that we helped uh, fixed, but we were changing the soap on them. The dispensers they had were old and we can't find the cartridge. So we put a new hand washing um, soap dispensers on there. And we had to service them while they were there. And while all the homeless people were around us. And like, uh, I mean, they're nice and they're there, you know. And it, they're not violent or anything. But it was kind of scary because, um, you know, if one of them have the, the Rona... A lot of them are going to have the Rona because they're all, like, there together. And there's, like, a hundred people washing their hands in those stations and leaving them, you know, pretty dirty. Uh, so, it was kind of, you know, I had a little bit of anxiety doing that. Uh, I was wearing gloves and a mask and everything. But, um, um, I was still a little bit anxious changing the soap dispensers. <laughs> Uh, but we got it done. We changed six cartridges, uh, six soap dispensers with a new type of cartridges. It took us like 20 minutes, guys. But like I had real anxiety being there. Um, and I've worked with homeless people before. Um, years past, we built a, a shower trailer for homeless people. That was all set up really nicely that, you know, Nucleus Construction built. And um, we're still working on donating it for some reason. But, uh, you know, we drove there and we got, but one by one is different. And plus the situation right now, I like to call it the new meta. meta. You know, when a game changes, uh, the game has an update, uh, you call it the new meta, right? Like weapons change and maps change and rules change. And you just call that situation the new meta. So I like to call the world right now as we live in the new meta. So like due to the new meta, I had a lot of anxiety being there. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah so it was it was it was crazy for me uh i'm glad we can help and i'm glad we can do um thanks for the homeless you know they gotta wash their hands and they're taking you know bird showers there and uh they have a place to do their laundry now after we put the steps on the laundry tra trailer and i'm glad that that we're able to do that but still kind of kind of scary not scary, but you know what I mean. Because, like, if you get the Rona, you're probably not going to die. But, like, I would probably have to stay home and, and quarantine myself. And I'd lose a bunch of work, you know. And don't want to do that. You know? But, yeah, it was a little bit. It had a little bit of anxiety being there. But I'm I'm still, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm still glad I'm able to help um, with the situation. But still kind of. These are the, the new stuff. I'm going to pull them up right now so we can see it. Online night? Yeah. Oh. Online night. You know, like the one that Charlie looks at all day long? So this is, you know, after I remodeled, we remodeled it. We put, like, some new floors, some new AC, a bunch of new washers and dryers. Hey, 
Hey Alex, hope you're doing good. Oh hey Jay, how you doing? I I, I do people. I saw some nurses walking in and out of the hospital with their masks, but they were pretty respectful and being pretty far away from us. But like uh, when we got to the hand washing station, that the homeless people were not uh, that respectful with our space. They were like right here washing their hands. What does the trailer hook up to? The power machines. So it's right next to like um, the the maintenance room of the these buildings. And the, uh, it's basically just the two really big extension cords that hook up to, it's something higher than 20, than 220. Because at the shop, we only had two 220 extension cords and we would break the breakers pretty often. So I could run, only run a couple, like three dryers at a time per 220. So it must be, Something pretty big. I don't know what that would be. I'm not a, an electrician. Avoiding the six three hundred COVID cases here in LA. Yeah, man. Uh, we only have a couple thousand. What does the trailer hook up to? Oh yeah. So I don't know what the actual line would be called, but it's greater than two twenty because two twenty just won't run all of them at the same time. Uh, but before we got there, they were running it. They tested it, so they just needed the steps that we put on there today. And we leveled the trailer out and stuff like that. Good to hear, Alex. Hey, Carl. Hi, Jay. Uh, but yeah, crazy day. And I pretty much show you what what I had uh, on today. These are my keys too. These are the old soap dispenser keys. This is the the whole key that opens the old soap dispenser. I I I wish I had taken some photos or some video, but I was like. So, I had some anxiety. I'm like embarrassed to say it, but I was like, but this is happening in Arizona. Like I'd seen some some homelessness that concentrated like that, like in California and Portland. Uh, in Portland, not so much that concentrated because when you get on the rail, like you might see them, but it's pretty linearly, right? So you'll see, and they're pretty spread out. Uh, but today, there were like 100 tents, like, packed up together. Which I think it's worse than just having them be free, because at least they're spread out. I, I mean, you know, it's, it's work. I'm glad we can help, you know. And we're all doing our part. Um, people are, are, are staying home, and, you know, they're losing a lot of work, you know, that they're not doing. And all other people are working from home. They're doing what they have to do. Um, and I think uh, essential workers are doing what they have to do. You know, I saw a lot of nurses walking in and out of the hospital today. And those are like the front lines right now, especially in New York and California and other places that are being hit pretty hard. EDC 11, how you doing, man? Just playing with leather and knives here and uh, telling people about my day. But yeah, I'm just doing my work. I like the mem that I saw recently that said... They're calling uh, us essential workers because calling us sacrificial workers would be too real. Michigan is rising pretty steady in cases, unfortunately. Makes sense to be nervous even if you aren't super paranoid. Don't need to be embarrassed about it. Thank you, Jake. I appreciate that. Uh, I gotta be real. Like Even when I go grocery shopping, I have a little bit of anxiety. Uh, just because I don't want to affect the humans that I love you know I know some people in that risky area and so you know wouldn't want to be a dread detriment to their health um so I do I do get a little bit anxious going into uh grocery stores and um and what happened today pretty good uh EDC 11 says pretty good hope everyone is doing well and then Susan Javier says, hey, Carlos, how you doing? Uh, shout out to Susan Javier. So, uh, yeah, I'm just talking just generally about the my day and the current situation. Um, I wouldn't want to be in New York, I'll tell you that. But it's, it, it's kind of nice. Arizona is, like, spread out. And, and we're not being hit that hard. Um, it was kind of scary when the deaths were going up by, like, a dozen a day. But today and... Today and yesterday, the there was only one reported, 
So, I, I mean, I'm hoping that it just stays down and, you know, we flatten the curve uh, per se. But, yeah, I mean, but overall, I had a pretty good day. Uh, it, those 20 minutes were anxiety uh, filled. And uh, it would have been cool to, like, have worn one of those 360 cameras so that I could show people what it was like, you know. And a lot of them were nice and they were thanking us. I should probably say that a lot of the homeless people that were there were very grateful saying, hey, thank you, man, for doing this for us. Uh, we really appreciate it and we're going to be taking care of it. And uh, they're talking about the hand washing stations and, we were, and my boss was like, right on, man. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate that you guys take care of it. Hard to find a balance between doing what you need to do and keeping those you are about safe. I get you. Yeah. What what? I forget, I asked you recently what you were doing for a living. Uh, I've been having so many conversations with a lot of people just because I care about, like, how they're doing just mentally and, and at home or not at home. And just because, like, what I said earlier is just um, you care for others. And, like, so you ask them how they're doing. Uh, but, yeah. I mean, uh, recently I, I did my uh, review of the Zebra F701. I've been using it at work a lot. Uh, solid stainless steel for $6 right now on Amazon. I mean, that it's super hard to beat. I'm from Cali, San Jose, and it's pretty bad here. Yeah, I've seen the numbers in, in California. And uh, we have family up there. and We pray for them every night. Um, and I have friends there too A lot of friends It's funny how many friends I have in California and New York Like all the stickers I have on my Not all of them but a lot of them um, Right here Bravely Great New York uh, Brian's from California Another New York And uh, Scott I forget where he's from But he He's not working right now That sucks uh, big ready to see sack stuff but yeah a lot of people I care for and I just ask them how they're doing hello Carlos and everyone hello menace with the knife how you doing same here traffic has never been better though I agree that's a super great positive I make it home I make it to work in 25 minutes it used to be 35 minutes so it's a 10 minute difference and I make it back home in 25 minutes and it used to take me 45, so that's a 20-minute difference coming back home. Insane. People will get citations if they don't comply with their stay at home. Oh, no way. I don't think uh, any of these uh, shutdown or stay-at-home order have any repercussions in Arizona. But people in Arizona are, are being pretty respectful ever since our governor said stay the fuck home. Uh, so I like to work out, I like to walk, I like to stay healthy, and my wife and I, uh, we've been walking uh, the doggy on the weekends. We walk about two miles, and people do stay six feet, probably ten feet away from each other as we walk uh, this little trail park thing. And uh, so yeah, it's been like nice to be able to get out and not be overwhelmed by people. Hey, mild man, already see how you doing. I was doing some construction, but at the moment I'm in between just which at the moment is the same for a lot of people. Currently taking care of my parents since they are up in their age. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, we got to take care of them. My office gave me a letter explaining how we are essential employees. Haven't been stopped but yet, but it's good insurance to have when headed to work. People have... Uh, okay, that was... Uh, C. Lemansky, and then EDC 11 says people have been fi fined and arrested here in in Minnesota. Wow. Yeah, when I read the stay at home order for Arizona, it literally said on the on the letter that there's it's not enforceable. So uh, it's an order with no bite. But people are in Arizona are being um, they're they're ninety ninety percent of them really are being really respectful of that order. I did see some teenagers on a Friday night uh, at the park I run at. I was running a couple miles on a Friday or Saturday night 
and like four teenagers were out drinking at this park and it's never happened before so i'm sure i'm sure they live close together and you they were, they were super bored at home so they just went out and had a, a few beers at the park uh it made me a little angry like you know these disrespectful little punks but at the same time i understand uh and then tom wingard sorry i murdered your name says hey carlos hey brother uh shout out to tom um uh, Jade says, you still have groups of teens stopping at gas stations here. No, yeah, I, I, I never see that. Gas stations are pretty empty, even though gas is extremely cheap. Um, so gas is like one ninety nine here. So it's, it's been really crazy. I drive a six-cylinder Xterra, and I used to spend 50 bucks, 45 to 50 bucks filling up the tank, and now it's like 40 flat, which is pretty nice. Um... But other than that, yeah, people have been extremely respectful um, in Arizona, which I appreciate. Uh, they shut down a couple ha hiking parks because people were uh, hiking too close to each other. It was just packed. So, the, you know, the most popular areas of the, those parks were, were closed down. But there's still tons and tons of trails that are just empty because they're far and they're more difficult trails. So they're just empty. And I know some of these on Apache Junction, Arizona, and stuff like that. Uh, you just you just gotta know about those trails to 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 trail them, and you might find another soul there, uh, hiking in 30 minutes to an hour. Um, that's that's just smooth. I got gas for a dollar forty-eight today. Damn. So, yeah, a lot of people made it here tonight, which is pretty cool. I appreciate all of you guys. But, um, yeah, I was just telling you, some of the people that were here earlier about, you know, my day. Um, there's like a, it's not a shelter. So this hospital in Arizona uh, are letting these people stay on the streets. Um, and they're supplying them with a laundry trailer and hand washing stations. Uh, and they have like a camp with tents uh, in case uh, they test positive or, or they get sick they can take care of them in those tents I know it, it sounds weird but like it's the only thing that they can do you know like it doesn't sound right but it's like the only way that they can be helped I don't know um, but yeah like they're providing hand washing station and laundry trailer and today I had to change the the dispenser soap dispenser for those hand washing stations and it was like a little bit of anxiety uh just being surrounded like that and uh yeah my personal bubble your personal bubble is per is basically just non-existent on the streets and as a Arizonian it's not I'm not used to that like I remember I had a cultural shock when I went to Portland uh because of the amount of homeless people everywhere but they're super nice out in Portland extremely nice and uh, cops are really nice to them too. Like everybody's just nice in Portland, uh, which was cool. And uh, I know I've seen them a lot in California. The homeless in California are, are not as nice as Portland homeless. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm just overgeneralizing. Is anybody from Oregon? Yeah, something is better than nothing. Uh, the last time I bought gas for 148 was in 1975. <laughs> I was born in 92. The homeless are ruthless here. Uh, Alex, where are you? I forget. But homeless in, Ar in Arizona, I I'd say they're average. But I guess you would say that because that, that's what you're used to. Not the homeless, just Portland in general. LOL. Yeah, Portland's super nice. Extremely good food. Every single truck stop... Uh, truck food uh, had just exquisite food and uh, Mexican food too you think as a Mexican you have pretty high standards for Mexican food and and like Portland being so far up north you'd think they don't have good Mexican food but every single taco I've had in Portland was just so freaking delicious it was like taking me back to my hometown delicious it was just ah I, I want to go back to Portland this summer so I hope this thing is over by the summer and I can go to Portland and, and have donuts and Mexican food and uh what's the other uh 
had so much food. Ramen's pretty good. Sushi is really good up there. Uh, Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So homeless in California, uh, South California, Los Angeles. Uh, they're pretty mean. But in Portland, they're not that mean. Great restaurant scene. Extremely great restaurant scene. And not just restaurants, the, the, the food trucks. Every food truck. Isn't Blade Show West in Portland? I don't know. I drive up there if that were true. Which I'm just, I'm all talk. I, I couldn't afford it even if I drove there and stayed in my truck. Um, but I guess I should show some knives if we're talking knives, right? So, boom, the guru. Boom, the opinel. Can any knife beat the opinel for the price? So, um, my old man at EDC says, yes, West, uh, Sh Blade Show West is in Portland. So Susan Javier says, I just received my first ProTech Sprint today, and I love it. Learn from watching your EDC. It's so small, but doesn't feel like like it once you hold it. So it's super ergonomic. That's that's in my review. It's like it's like a two inch blade and like a two inch handle, yet it's still ergonomic. Like it, you still feel like you're holding a tool in your hand. And it's, it doesn't feel brittle or, or, or denty. It feels like a tool, just smaller. And that's something I really like. Plus that pound when you push that button. I'm super glad you loved it because I love it. And when I praise things, I want to be right about it. I just don't want to talk all positive about something and then let people down about it. So I'm glad you love it. I'm glad you got it because of the channel. This is why I have one. I haven't had a ton of experience with the homeless in Grand Rapids since I live in the country, says Jade. Um, that's good. I rarely have any interactions with them. Uh, I see them uh, like every now and then, but it's not that prevalent in Phoenix. The Protec half breed is the sprint with a longer handle. Really nice. Yeah, I've seen that. It doesn't make sense to me, but I'm sure it makes sense to people like in California. The homeless in Trenton, New Jersey are a pain in the ass, says Tom. I bet. I've never been to New Jersey or New, New York or just, you know, back east. Uh, I guess Indiana is as back northeast I've ever been. But I'm I, that's totally different type of demographic. And there's like no homeless people there. There's just old, old people there. That's what I noticed from being in Indiana. Uh, we took out a gigantic vault door out of uh, an old bank. Ah, crazy weird. Uh, but yeah, that was a lot of talk about homeless. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful I can help. But it was a little weird. But yeah, I'm thinking of regrinding the guru. It's only two and a half inch cutting edge though so I don't know if it's worth it but I, I loved it I used it for a long time and it's kind of sad to just have it in a drawer <laughs> Tom Wagner says do yourself a favor and don't <laughs> okay I'll listen to you I will I think I'll just keep it a memento of my early days I mean it's quite a nice memento it's pretty modern, you know. It's got like that insert thing and the over travel stop and bearings, great action, titanium. It's got all the nice stuff, and I can just keep it as a fidget toy because it just doesn't work for me anymore, especially when I got things like this. Wow, the action! Yeah, it's insane, insane. The Dukes has a bigger blade and it's not that smooth. It cuts better because of a hollow grind. It's got a recurve and a hollow grind. So this thing against cardboard, freaking insane. Against wood, pretty good. Uh, opening package it is, is kind of weird. You think you could use this little curve here. But no, nah, you still have to poke it. You have to sharpen it, I guess. But I'm kind of, I'm kind of, you know, the recurve makes me nervous about sharpening it, sharpening it on my Lansky. So 
so I don't know. I do have to sharpen it before I send it to Red. I don't want to send Big Red EDC a dull knife. That would be disrespectful. I really respect that guy. And then I got the PM2 with the 12 carbon fiber. It's just like I don't use the Guru. It's just it doesn't cut. It's a nice knife, but it doesn't cut. Especially to the stuff I got nowadays. It just it doesn't doesn't do it for me anymore. It used to do it for me. Because I didn't know any better. But it doesn't do it for me anymore. Like it just doesn't. Fidget wise, it's insane. The action. It would have been great as a flipper. But yeah. But I guess that's my life today. A knife that doesn't cut, it's like a night without stars. <laughs> Those nights are kind of nice too. It makes you appreciate the stars. I, I like road trips because of that reason. And I like leaving late, okay? Because then you get to enjoy the road. And even though you're in a car, you can look outside and see all those stars. Like when you, I come back from Vegas, I drive up to Vegas every now and then. And coming back from Las Vegas in an empty road out in the desert in the middle of nowhere with my wife next to me. That is just awesome. It's just it's just a great day. It's a great feeling. And then, you know, you get to look out your window a little bit and see the stars bright as ever in the middle of nowhere. Just cactuses, the road, and your wife. It's just an awesome feeling. Don't worry about Jody. is very forgiving and great guy. Okay. Uh, Jade says, got my CT0460 recently, and I've guillotined my finger like 20 times. <laughs> that happened to me with my CT0850. Uh, I, I even cut my nail, because you know you can drop it on your nail pretty confidently because it's a nail. It will cut your nail. Uh, CT sharpens knives pretty, pretty good, and the CT0850 blade was so heavy. That's just the lights from the Stroop to burn into your head tonight. <laughs> The strip is nice, but no, I mean, those starts out in the desert are, are extremely nice. Uh, Susan Javier says, yes, the sprint action fires up crazy. That if you don't hold it tight, it can fly out of your hand. Yeah, especially because it's so small. Just whoosh. Uh, it's never deployed in my pocket, but that would be scary. Um, I But I always have it clipped nicely, and the clip is, is one of, it's a perfect clip. It's perfect. I should have brought it out. It's out in the uh, knife box all the way in my bedroom, so it won't be showing up today. But it's just a crazy action. I, I, I want to check out more Protex. An SNG Protex would be nice to own and play with. And which one is the Quaken Protex Full Auto? Uh, that one would be nice to own or just to play around with. And the SBR, the Protex SBR would be super cool to play with um other than that the mordex but it's not really an auto but the mordex would be cool i have a friend that would let me borrow one uh i just haven't borrowed any knives lately because you know like i don't have that much time to review things these lives have been nice and you guys have been awesome plugging in and watching these and keeping me company and, 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 and just commenting on them. You guys have been great. Appreciate you guys a lot. All 11 of you. 39 minutes in. I don't have an auto in my collection anymore. So that's unfortunate. Hmm. I, I never let go of my sprint. Because it's so tiny. And it's only 100 bucks. So like. It doesn't occupy any space. It's a nice secondary carry. And it's only hundred dollars, so it it's it's always gonna stay in my collection. So is this, and so is this. Now I don't think I'll be like those reviewers that says my top ten keepers, and like six months from then, they have their new top ten keepers, and it's ten different knives. Always good to know that you are well. Yeah, it's good to know that every one of you are well. And healthy and good. Um, ah, I'm calling it. Uh, thank you guys for showing up. Any experience with the Microtech autos? 
I have have some experience not using them, but every time I meet an Arizonian friend that's into knives, they always have one of those uh, Microtechs. The Ultratech is the only one I've tried. The 85, the 75, the, the full one. Uh, my friend Angel here in Tempe, he lives in Tempe, which is like Phoenix. It's just like 20 minutes away. I tried his out. His has been my favorite Microtech Ultratech. It's the an 85 version and half of it is copper. It's pretty sweet because it's pretty lightweight. It's pretty small, uh, but that copper just gives it that extra. Later, be well, Carlos. Look to the stars. I will. I will. It might just be lights in my retina, but I will. 